we're going to start with uh, Liam Kane, who's the Chief Executive of the East London Business Alliance, who's going to talk about making East London the best economic environment in the world. Well, it's easy, you wave a wand and it all happens. I, I'd like to think that that was the case, but can I just start by saying, Geraldine, thank you for having me here. And, and Elba is really pleased to be here and supporting today, because this is very different. As my staff will tell you, I am a control freak. So coming in and being ordered around by Chris to go, I don't know, I thought that was great fun. It's different, and the whole thing is that out of today, we've got to see a result. My contention this morning is that East London is the driver for the, the economic regeneration of the UK, not just for London. The next 20 years, this is where the action is. It's going to happen anyway. The private sector are coming, the developments are there. And I thought I'd just draw a little bit of history. You know, I love living and working in East London. This is, this is my second time being based in East London. I came to Canary Wharf first with the Mirror Group when we re relocated in 1995. And I have to tell you, the journalists were very reluctant to leave Elvira's and Fleet Street, their favourite watering hole. But when they got down here, no pubs, no shops, it was lonely. I have to tell you, the Limehouse Link hadn't yet opened, the DLR was here, but the Jubilee Line was yet to come. Then, the next thing I got involved with, you might wonder about my choices, but I went to the Millennium Dome for a couple of years I, and raised the sponsorship there. And it was a bit of a challenge, to say the least. But look what's been achieved. Canary Wharf, since the arrival of Jubilee Line and with some very clever management people, has turned into the raging success that we all see today. Fastest growing financial services sector in Europe. And if you listen to that plans for the next 10 years, we're talking about tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of jobs. O2, which you can see out the window, suddenly the best selling venue in the whole of the world. You know, it didn't take a genius, it just took some private sector initiative and some incentive to get involved. But today is very difficult, and, and Geraldine, in her introductory remarks, talked about challenging. The biggest challenge that any of us face are cuts. I've been talking to some people this morning about the cuts, particularly in the cultural area, which are going to affect East London. And my answer is, whilst it's difficult and, 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 and semi-tragic, not quite tragic, I, the, whilst it's difficult, the point is that we just have to change the way that we react to things. Um, some people say to me, you know, well, why aren't Canary Wharf? And, you know, if you look at what the key to economic regeneration for this area is, it's about jobs. I heard somebody say the other day, you know, just like player education, 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 that East London has to be about jobs, jobs, jobs for the next 20, 30 years. Canary Wharf and the city are open to offers. They will employ people. There are multiple examples that Elba works with, with immensely diverse uh, people working within the banks and within the, the big financial services companies. But what we have to do is to provide the right level of candidates. Stratford City is going to provide 8,000 jobs alone. The first uh, opening day, we expect to get somewhere between 15 and 20% of those jobs for local people. I don't think that's good enough. And I think we have to be looking at raising aspiration in our schools, raising aspiration in our job seekers to take as many of those jobs. By the time the gains arrive a year later, let's hope that it's 25 to 30%, and five years later, maybe 80%. Um, Canning Town, 30,000 square metres of retail, leisure and, and office space. Those are jobs, and Canning Town, as everyone knows, has the highest youth unemployment in, in East London. We've got to have our kids ready for those jobs. The London Thames Gateway Development Corporation, Steve Ox, the development director, is here this morning. He tells me that in the planning permissions they've given over the last five years, and are now in some under construction, that will provide 13,000 jobs. If you look at what we've done in the last eight years, 100,000 plus jobs created. That's more than Manchester, Glasgow and Birmingham added together. I wouldn't like to be doing the job that we're all facing based up in Glasgow still, although most people would at least understand me very easily. And then there's a the talk about Tech City. The Olympic Park Legacy Company are going to lead on Tech City. We've got an opportunity. Shoreditch is buzzing, so Silicon Roundabout, We've got to make it just a bit bigger, turn it into the Silicon Valley, reaching all the way down to, down to the, uh, the, the, the Olympic Park site itself. The, 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 the point about getting people to, into those jobs is that we've got to prepare. I'd like to give you just a couple of quick examples from Elba's experience. Many of you will know Rogue School in Canning Town. It, it moved from Stratford uh, down to a new site in Canning Town just last year. Now, four years ago, that school was coming out of special measures. 
23% of, of pupils passing five A to C GCSEs, including maths and English. Today, that figure is 67%. The school is regarded as the third best school in Newham, and, and you know, after being previously, it was the worst. So what's changed? But one of the things we think has changed is we put a business support group in there, and I'll tell you some of the companies involved. Accenture, BT, McGregor's a legal company, and Thompson Reuters, the FSA. And what they've done is working with Charlotte Robinson, the head teacher there, working with them, they've looked at inspiring the, 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 the pupils, the boys there. The GCSE law group, for example, has been uh, off to McGregor's, they've been to a visit to the Royal Courts of Justice, they've been given an insight. And I grew up in a council estate in Glasgow, I didn't see a live cow until I was 11, when they took us away on a day trip to Loch Lomond. And that's not the sort of upbringing that we should be giving to We've got to just kind of give them. Yeah, I knew that you got corned beef or something like that. But <laughs> and spam. I wasn't sure where spam came from. But, and those sort of partnerships do create a different outlook. And, you know, Charlotte Robinson, I just quote her, the impact the business support group has had in the school speaks for itself. When I talk to other head teachers, and they want to replicate this model in their schools and see the huge benefits it's had in Rokeby. Working in schools is just one aspect. One other aspect I'll give you is uh, London City Airport. The, the chief executive there, Richard Gooding, said, no, the people from workplace aren't good enough. They're not the quality that we want to employ. We persuaded them to have an embedded project manager, a man called James Innes leads that team for me. And in the last uh, 10 months, we put 136 people into work, 87 of them at the airport, and the balance in other jobs with other local employers. I'll give you just a couple of examples. The, the whole key thing here is just about preparation. People arriving for interview prepared to say the right things, understanding having done the research and turning up willing to work. I'll give you a couple of examples. Pearl Barclay had been out of work for 20 years. What chance does she get, have of getting a job? Coming to take off into work, a pet name for the project, and now she's working at a duty-free store and loving it. There's another young man uh, 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 who... Uh, we got a job as a baggage handler with, 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 with the airport services company. And there's another a young man who's working in the city airport fire service. If you get them the job ready, they're more than likely to get into work. We find that, that we've got a 95% plus success rate. And that's about East London. Alison White, who's my manager, who's been responsible for working with Community Links today, always says there's nothing in the water that makes East London people unemployable. And I think she's right. Let me just tell you about... The, the, the lad who uh, joined baggage handling service, he's now training to be a pilot. Why would he ever have thought that he could become a pilot, you know, five years ago? But here he are, he's there. Right, just in, in conclusion, there's a single message coming out. One thing we need to do, despite the cuts, despite the challenges, East London's not about deprivation. East London's not about being second-class citizens. East London's not about, no, we can't get the jobs, boss. East London's about a confident message coming forward. Elba, I said, we're fed up apologising to the banks. That's all over. Get on with it. The banks and everybody else are part of the solution. They are working with us. They're prepared to work with us. And I think I'm really looking forward to some good ideas coming up today and uh, being ordered around by Chris a bit more. Well done. Thanks.